Europe is in the midst of one of the worst refugee crises since World War II. Technology has changed since then and is it making the migration process slightly less brutal. Refugees are using apps such as Google Maps to find their way, so relying less on blackmail or less in risks in dealing with human traffickers. Popular science technology editor Michael Nunez is here. Insight Venture Partners and Managing Director Hillary Gosher and Fox News radio host Brett Larson, welcome to you all. So what do you make of this? I mean, I'm thrilled to see such a practical and humanitarian application for any of the technology that's been created here. But I'm also wondering how many Syrian refugees are wandering around with charged phones? Well, that's a really hard figure to, to, to find. But, uh, but I think it's safe to say that, uh, you know, Syrian refugees, just like everyone else in the world, have recognized cell phone technology as something that is necessary. Mm -hmm. I think it just speaks to the ubiquity of cell phones at this point and how important the Internet and just Internet connectivity in general uh, is and, and how it uh, plays such an important role in our daily lives. The interesting part is the aid agencies are starting to recognize that as part of aid, Wi-Fi is an essential part of aid and electricity charging stations where people are, are an essential right? part of aid. So in addition to blankets and food and medicines, they're doing Wi-Fi hotspots and they're doing electricity connections. Fascinating. Which is a great point as yeah. well, and that is to say at scale with the aid, with the aid agencies. Yeah, I, yeah. I think all the, way, all the way around it is phenomenal, and absolutely it speaks to the importance of Internet connectivity everywhere in the world, even in these sort of, not these aren't out of the way places, but there are places where these people are passing through that aren't necessarily overseen by So government. even for the cynics among us, when we hear about the balloons, whether it's Google or whether right. it's Facebook, who want to connect all these further flung places, at least from the point of view of North America, there is actually a silver lining to that technology, not just this idea of getting more customers. Speaking of getting more customers, Apple releasing the stylus with Steve Jobs, right, said if they introduce a pencil, it means I failed. And then, you know, fast forward, here it is. Right. What is your take on that? And I really want to talk about the TV, but I just have to ask you about the um, stylus. So the <laughs> Apple stylus, the, the Apple pencil is a little bit odd. I think everyone in the tech community was baffled, quite frankly, when they saw that release. Um, the iPad Pro, I think, is a, a niche product. I think they were pretty open about that. So it might make for sense business for business people, right? Yeah, graphic designers, business people, uh, enterprise users. Uh, Users, but um, for the average person, it's not, you know, it's, it's just, it's not going to have a, a role and in their as far day as life. the phones go, now with the subsidies going away, right. Hillary, right. what is your take on that? Are people going to pay for iPhones out of their own pocket, 100% cost? You know, it's a trend that Microsoft is doing. They've moved to Microsoft 360. They're moving to subscription-based business models. Apple's doing exactly the same thing. They don't have the relationship with the customer the carrier does. This way they get the relationship with the customer. Well, I know why Apple wants to do it, yeah. but it's just going to be interesting to see how it pans out. What do you think? I think it's fantastic. I think given the uh, the over the turnover of technology, we need to go back to that bell system way of you don't own any of this stuff. You rent it from us. Fred's like, and bring back the monopoly. I, 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 <laughs> well, but then that way it's also there's an incentive to give the phone back when you're like, oh, there's a new one. You'll Take my old one. Next one. You'll upgrade to the next one. You, it, it's less waste. I mean, we don't know what they're going to do with the old phones. I would hope fix recycle, them up and hopefully. recycle them or sell them as used phones. I, I like this concept. Smart for of, Apple. Of you no longer have that upgrade cycle hiatus. People will exactly. just be moving yeah. to the next phone. And, so and they've got a captive can. audience for the new phone. Definitely. And this is just providing more um, points of entry for their customers, right? So, um, you know, before, as you said, there was this latency. People would buy a new phone. They'd be locked into a contract, they'd want the new phone, but right. they wouldn't have a, any subsidies to take care of that. And now Apple controls also the whole experience, which as we know, Apple likes yeah. to do. All right, Apple TV, I'm going to give you each yay or nay. What do you think? Yay, but I want the streaming service. Like, right. where's We're this waiting, rumored streaming right. this service? Is, this is, you know, the, the first paw. Forward. And when are, the, when are the funny videos of you asking for to watch something through Siri and it's completely wrong? And you get the yeah. wrong thing. Yeah. 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 yeah, You know what's going to happen. Yeah, I'm a qualified yeah. It's just another media server. It's a slightly better version of a media server. They haven't yet got their apps on the TV. Remains to be seen. Okay. Yeah, I'm a big yeah. Yeah, I've had a media center for a long time. Had a computer in my living room for a long time. This looks like a better version of that. I'm really excited about the sports releases. Uh, so I want some NFL in there. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, well tonight is your night then.